Hello, my name is Dr. George Pachaki. I want to uh, welcome you to Retail Merchandising. This is going to be a quick overview of what we discussed in our lectures, we discussed from your readings, and we discussed in our discussion board or in our face-to-face -face conversations in the classroom. Uh, so I'm just going to, we're going to, this is one of the most interesting uh, area that I enjoy teaching uh, out of this is retail location. Where are you going to open up your business venture? Taking me for uh, your major project, you're going to have to create a, a, a store, a new store. Within six months, you have to find a location. Are you going to, uh, are you going to look at the different retail locations we're going to discuss in this chapter, uh, in this learning? Uh, select the right location for your business venture that complements the other uh, uh, businesses, just like you're doing in your own business you have your product lines and you have a product mixes so your product lines different items will complement other products within there it gives you product mix so if i'm selling clothes i sell shirts what well, complements is a tie maybe cufflinks some jewelry t-shirts pants everything else that complements that makes sense now when you're looking at locations for a store you have to look at you are one product selling and all these other stores, whether it's in a mall, whether it's in a strip mall, whether it's a plan, downtown Main Street, how do you fit in into that? Do they complement me? Okay? So that's what we're going to find out. And then we're going to talk about different exhibits, location, strategy, how to get in there, what, you know, what are some of the rules, you know, uh, uh, certain things, you just like a... Uh, uh, zoning requirements, what you could sell, what you can't sell, uh, what kind of signage you could have. All that's all set up, okay? So here we go. So we're going to go on this. I'm going to try to keep this under 20 minutes. This is just a quick overview. Uh, remember, this is just like a summarization, a, a, a capstone. After you have had me for a uh, week, we discussed this, we did everything else, homework assignment, blah, blah, blah. Now we're just kind of a uh, uh, quick uh, review. So I'm not going to go into much detail. And if this is the first time you're listening to this, it's just planting seeds. Think about it. Okay, it's not that hard. All right, so types of retail. You have unplanned locations. That means they don't have it. It's like Main Street. You don't plan it, just open up. Main Street, if you look, when you see Main Street, think of a small town. Some small towns, all you have is a post office and a barber shop. That's all that is, is able to support it. Maybe that's all they have that could uh, run that. Some small towns <coughs> you have a little grocery store. Maybe a convenience store, have a bank, some are larger, but it's not planned. It's just here's what I need. Here's this community, uh, twenty thousand people. There's the we all come to this a hub, and whatever we need, that's it. That's unplanned. Now, planned locations, you even have some like uh, if you come out of the suburbs. If you come out to you know, certain areas, districts, even Chicago or uh, in a lot of the larger suburbs, where it has different plan locations where they have zoning rules. You can only have a, a, a type, uh, this type of a business, or you can only have commercial, so you can have that. So when you look at those, they're trying to maintain planning so you have the residential not mixing biting heads with a commercial because they're up all, all night. They're trying to make money. I want to get some sleep. So there is some zoning that is requirement that makes sense. So there's harmony within an economic zone. And notice I'm using business and marketing terminology. You have to start using that in your vocabulary when you're going forward. You're taking this class or other classes, start using them. Yeah, not to your friend. Why are you giving me? Yeah, hey, I gotta go to a strip mall. I gotta go to uh, an unplanned uh, uh, location. What the heck is an unplanned? What are you, some kind of spy? I'm just kidding you. All right, I'm trying to make light of it. Okay, so then you have common areas. If you look at Woodfield Mall or Gurney Mill, there's a common area. Even in a shopping uh, center or leisure center, strip mall, there's a common area. Who maintains that? Who pays that? I live in a condominium. I live in a townhouse. I live in a, 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 a gated community. I own the home, I own the property, but somebody else maintains everything the surroundings out there, some association. So that's something you have to look at. How quickly are going to uh, uh, do the snow? How much planning? How much parking? All that is consideration when you're looking at that. I think we get that next chapter. Okay, and a trade area, a, 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 a gross leasable area. When you're looking at that, you're looking at how much floor. A lot of the strip malls and everything else, I used to work for ComEd, are just 
wall, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, empty space. They'll throw a, a fake wall up there. They're not bearing wall. They just throw them up there and run fire, uh, power to them. But the main power is all around here. So you want more square footage, you want smaller square footage, you want more space. You could do that flexible. But if you open up a restaurant, you need to have a grease trap. You need to have certain uh, ventilation. You are very specific in what you need, so it's a little harder to find that. If I'm looking at doing some kind of exercising, doing some, all I need is open space. Psh, that's all I need, air conditioning, bathroom, and some parking. So you have to look at your location, okay? Now, uh, let's see, select the location. So you look at the size, the occupancy, the restriction, how many people are, uh, are they, uh, easy to get in, easy to get out. I'm playing retail location. If I'm looking at free sand, I grew up in Chicago, around Humboldt Park area. You see people have their own uh, solid goods or something on the strike. Maxwell Street would be like that, so, uh, like a flea market outside, for lack of a better word. Some location that they like that because it gives you a, a lot large car. A lot of the suburbs have a large garage sale. Everybody has a garage sale, so it's like, oh, you can come in here, walk around. That works out well. Those are free stand and they're and they're put away. You know, all, uh, all parcels. You know, Menards has or Home Depot has a lot of property owned, and they have parcel out there. But remember, those stores that come out those outlot, for lack of a better word, they don't have anything that's competing with their uh, uh, own business model. You're not going to see a hardware store out there. Psh, no way in hand. All right? Okay, now urban locations. Now let's look at urban location. You have your city. has a different way. Downtown. So uh, you know, I work downtown. Uh, okay, different people buying. You're not going to have real big things. You're not going to buy furniture unless they do delivery. Doesn't make sense. Suits, tie, haircut, uh, stuff. Something I could take on the train. Something I could take the bus. Something I could walk downtown. Uh, or you have a lot of uh, apartments around there. You know, high rises. You know, uh, twin towers. Everything else. Uh, so uh, if I'm uh, Marina Towers, twin towers, uh, Marina Towers. You know what I mean? So when you look at this close around there, so it has a different. Uh, uh, atmosphere around it during the daytime, nighttime completely different. A lot of the stores they don't make as much business. Daytime, so you have to be very specific to, very, uh, to your clientele during the daytime. You didn't make a lot of money during lunchtime. People wandering out. Oh, I gotta buy a suit. I gotta buy a gift. So there's little stuff you could buy. Julie, a little bit high end, and that's what's uh, available. Inner city, a little different. So you have like a, a desert zone, when they say there's there's no shopping center. Because some areas are a little bit uh, the crime rate may be high. Uh, uh, maybe the uh, they uh, they may not have uh, the disposable income you're looking to buy your product. But you may open up there because it's social responsibility, or you have outlet stores. Something out there you could still you could get tax breaks so you get a lot of things incentives from the city to bring you your business in there but you have to be careful because there's a risk involved in that okay and i'll leave that main street okay what else we have here i'm just bouncing through what's important okay now shopping centers and planned retail so these are the ones that you're going to be looking at where are you going to open up your business is it going to be in a shopping center? Is it going to be a strip mall? Remember we talked about, is it going to be power centered? And if I look at power centers, is it consists of big box retail stores? So you got all the big pockets. Now look, a lot of people, when they go to the Walmart or the Target or the Macy's or the Nordstrom or whatever, the real large store, they get tired. They may not, and some, unless you're in a mall where they could they have to walk from one to the other and you got that little niche right there, your little store, they'll come and see you. But you have to look at your customer. So before you rent or look, just like when you're buying an apartment, the realtor is going to take you out there at the ideal time. There's no traffic. There's no noise. There's no kids. So everything is, oh, man, this is so subtle. Oh, this is my dream place. And then you move in. The train's right there. And then you know, the train was there. The airplane's coming <laughs> She just knew the right timing, or he knew the right timing. So you have to go there and see what kind of flow. Look at one day, see what kind of people are coming in. Well, they look. You're just looking at people. You're people watching. What you doing in business? Do they come in? And they, you know, you're not stereotype. No, they come to this store, this store. What are they buying? What kind of people coming in there? You, you mean uh, you could tell the clientele, and then you could say, could I? tap off that clientele is already there with my store coming in there okay and closed shopping malls those are kind of like uh, 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 fading away and they're fading away because a lot of people like to come in and go COVID-19 they don't like to be in a congested area anymore 9-11 uh, 
started that uh, 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 decline for malls and large uh, gathering areas, okay? And then you have lifestyle centers, and those are kind of nice, you know, resemble Main Street, so just set up all over, you, you could come park. It has something else that gives it that quaint little look about a certain area. Long Grove is basically more antiques and everything else, and there's different places that have it. Mixed-use development, out the centers, theme parks, if you look at downtown uh, Chicago by uh, the Chicago River, they got the big Ferris wheel, uh, Navy Pier, for lack of a better word, and they have the riverfront. You, you know what I mean? So uh, you, you, uh, they do everything else to bring people in. Remember, the whole thing of stores. Not only do you buy as a shopper, I could buy online, Amazon. Why do I go out? Entertainment, experience, socialization, meeting people, touching the product, looking around. That's the experience. Look at Target. Why did they change? They changed from like a Walmart. They wanted to have little area so you could kind of think, when I'm going to buy this shirt, I see the mannequin. I see this. I say, oh, does all look good on this? And the 50 other people look just like me. I don't want to be unique. Then I go to Macy's. I go to Nordstrom's. Or I go to a boutique that does one of a kind. Oh, this will just fit you just perfect. I'll adjust this. You have this, but you have to pay for it. So where do you want to go? You know what I mean? I'm not going to have a tailor, a high-end boutique next to Walmart. Because the people going to Walmart, nothing against Walmart, I have a Walmart. People going to Walmart are buying everyday stuff. They're looking at the best prices. I may, even Target may be a little questionable, because that's supposed to be a little higher up than Walmart. But still, it's a different uh, maybe a little bit. You could get away with it, certain things. But where are you going to open up? You could have a resale sh shop. You could have different... And resale shop is not like a Goodwill or anything else. You have good clothing. And, and you know, we'll talk about inventory where you get your clothing for... Uh, uh, they, they don't call it resale. They call it vintage clothing. What the hell is vintage clothing? It's old clothing. I should sell all my stuff, make some money. Just kidding. Okay? All right? So you have to, and then you have your power centers, that we have in here, location, strategy, is it going to be a convenience, you want people in and out, and even the layout in the store, right, once you understand it, you know, i got to go in here, different exits, I just want to get the food, I come in this area, and I have to go through the whole store, I want to get uh, uh, my pharmacies right in the middle, and remember, a lot of the stores, shopping centers, bringing in pharmacies, you have to get your, uh, you want to get some pharmacies, your prescriptions, or whatever, so it's a magnet, once you're in there, you buy stuff. Get them in there, okay? Uh, Kohl's is doing something with Amazon, you know, right? You could return to uh, Kohl's, but once you're in there, you're buying something else in there. Because you have to walk all the way in the middle of the store, and then they give you that Kohl's coupon thing, and you look, oh, Kohl's cash. Oh, I'm not trying to sell it. I mean, I, I could see the marketing. Think of why they did that. Why didn't they just have Amazon right by the front door? Why did I go all the way in there? They made you go all the way in there, not only to warm you up, but to get you to more look around. I'm like, gee, I'm already in here. Might as well buy this. I got this 50 bucks off. To spend money, impulse shopping. Welcome to, you have to know your customers. You have to know how to get them in. Once you get them in, then I could salt them. I could motivate them, okay? All right. So you've got that specialty shops, right? Uh, you know, density market. Uh, how many other shops similar to mine? And uniqueness of the retail offering value. What makes you different than anybody else? What makes me a better instructor than other instructors? Can I be a better instructor? No, I'm just. You see what I'm doing? I'm planting that seed. So when you're doing your evaluation, better instructor. George is better than instructor. Where did I hear that from? Oh, must be, must be my subconscious, my intuition. Marketing is planting seeds, watering it, and going over it. And part of the planting, remember the four P's of marketing, place, product, price, and promotion? The place sets the tone, the atmosphere. You look at the, you get your coupon, you get your advertising, a catalog rule from Macy's. You go into Macy's, you expect high end. You get your catalog from Walmart, it falls apart, paper. You go there, you know what to expect. You get your catalog from a, 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 a from a boutique. Has something quaint in it. Has something different. What makes you different? Could be pricing. Could be the material. Could be one of a kind. It could be high quality. It could something is driving. Or it could be just an everyday store, and we need toothpaste, like an airport. I just need toothpaste. I need something in here. That's all I go in there. I need a pop. pop, pop, pop. But they know their customers and what they're doing in that market. You have to understand, 
what's flowing. Remember, when customers come into the store, they're moving, they're moving, and they're moving in that area. Now, could I catch them out of that area and bring them into my store and then throw them back out with goods in the pocket? And I already had their money. That is the whole thing of marketing. That's the whole thing of retail. You have to know where you're going to open up, okay? And then you always have to look at the, uh, 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 what do you call it, the migration to the suburbs. You're looking at the big box. Do I want to be in that? You know, big box is a magnet. Draws them in. But you have to see what they offer and what customers are looking for. You want that little niche. I'm not going after that. There's no way I could compete. Look, if you look at some of the small hardware stores, you have the... Uh, uh, Home Depot and Menards in Chicago. And then you have the little Ace Hardware store. Go in there, got a lot of stuff. Almost looks like a dollar store. But there's always people in there. Because they have those little screws, those little knobs, those screens, individual that will work for the group that the Menards and all that, they don't want to worry because they're just moving by numbers. They're looking by category. They're looking at uh, inventory turnover. The little store is value. Oh, I'll fix that screen for it. Oh, you live in, what's this? Oh, usually this uh, filter, this uh, bulb, it's hard to get. But we carry all these because we know our customers around here. And once you're in there for that bulb, oh, I can buy this. Even though it's a higher end, you're paying a little bit more because you think, I want to keep this business wrinkled. If that bulb goes, I'll never find it no place else. Nah, you can probably find it online. But do you see what I mean? So you have to be, uh, 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 you could work it, but you have to understand how you're going to get. What don't they uh, uh, have that your customers are looking for? And it, it's not going to be a threat to, the, to, to them, okay? And then building zones and licensing requirements. And then make sure you always look at the key slide, the terms and conditions. The whole thing that I want you to learn out of this, out of all the classes you're taking here with myself or other instructors or in other schools or whatever you're learning, YouTube, uh, 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 YouTube University, or whatever, you have to start using the vocabulary and the concept. That gives you a little credibility. That gives you the connection with that store owner. All right, so that's all I have. Let's see how many minutes I have. 17 minutes. I'm always trying to keep these under 20. I used to have them for an hour, and people go, oh, it's too long. It is a little bit too long, because you already read everything else. I don't have to go from step to step. I'm not regurgitating. I'm summarizing. My name is Dr. George Machakin. We'll see you in our next thing. I think I forgot what the next chapter is. Bye.